Welcome to the Crypto News. In this video, Gareth Soloway shares his thoughts on current situation, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Listen to what he has to say. It's a nasty collapse. And, and I think the biggest thing to understand here is that this is this is all about human psychology, right? So in 2021, we saw stocks like GameStop, AMC, Bed Bath Beyond soar to ridiculous heights and then come back in. And what we've seen here is that it's the Wall Street bets crowd has tried to relive the magic of 2021. So they've started to pump these things. They started to run. We saw them go up precipitously, but not as high as 2021. And they've come crashing in so, so fast. This is the psychological part of it, is that you have number one, the same investors that were in last time, they got burned when the collapse occurred. So they're much quicker to pull the trigger. Last year, you had months of people saying, hey, I'm never going to sell. I'm going to hold on. You had the apes. You had all the, I mean, there's all of these things going on, right? And ultimately, that is no longer intact because human psychology remembers the collapse and people are selling into it. The last thing to remember is that this was inevitable because the Fed in 2021 was printing money. The government was sending checks. All these things, the Fed was basically leaving interest rates at zero or near the near the zero marker, and that helped these stocks run. Now you have a totally different scenario. You're in a bear market, and that means that these stocks did not have the same flight that they would have last year. So not surprising to see the collapse. I hope too, not too many people got burned on this, but nonetheless, it is scary the falls that these things have had. But in terms of talking to people and saying, follow the herd, you never want to be a follower of the herd. Occasionally it works. It gives you a false sense of security. Generally, when you're following people, you're going to end up losing, especially when it's the herd mentality. Um, the smart money gets in at the beginning of the run, the dumb money later on, and you never want to be in that crowd that's chasing at the end. So avoid the hype, essentially. So, so what we saw is Friday when the equity market sold off, you got this nasty candle. It did close below this channel. So look at the beauty of this channel here, how we've been hovering up and down inside of it really since June. But the negative here is that we saw a close below. Now, you haven't confirmed, but as far as I'm concerned, this is a very, very nasty little pattern formation. And it's likely we're going to go retest this yellow trend line here, which happens to be the high from 2017 right here. That's going to be a big line in the sand. If we break that, then you see that move down that I've been calling for as my secondary target. You know, my first target was 20,000. We talked about it last year in Dubai when, when I was there in, in October 2021, we said 20,000. Now I say it's going to actually go lower than that. Next stop is going to be 12 to 13,000. So we are headed lower and uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be a rough road along the ways here. And, and to be fair, that he's, he's correct on that. And, and I actually have that same long-term view. I'm a big long-term bull. I'm just a shorter-term macro and that, you know, macro economist looking at the cycles and everything like that. So the beauty of 12 to 13,000, it gets us to that 80 to 85% correction that Bitcoin has done every single cycle. Uh, so that kind of gives us a basis of what to look for. It's also a strong technical support, but you're right. I mean, if you're a long-term investor and you're not going to look at it for 10 years or five years, there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to, this is the key, right? You have to be able to weather the emotional storm because I know a lot of investors out there, they might buy in at 22 or 21. And when they're down 40% at 12, they might panic and unload because you're going to hear a lot of negativity out there. And if you, you have to be able to control that and, and shut it out and then you're okay to do that. But if you're someone who's very emotional and you're going to exit the trade at that point, and then it goes to 50,000, then 100,000, that's not a good scenario for you to be in. So if you have emotional control, that's fine. Start inching in. I also advocate for dollar cost averaging. Buy a little here at 21, buy a little bit more at 18, buy some more at 15 and so forth, versus just going all in at one specific level. I don't think so. Not at this stage of Bitcoin's life cycle. I think down the line, you will see a, a kind of a difference and, and Bitcoin in the crypto market start to emerge. But right now, it is tied to a risk asset. I know a lot of people said in 2021, oh, it has nothing to do with the stock market. It'll go up when inflation goes up and the markets sell off. 
we obviously learned that that wasn't the case. So I'm in the camp that we're going to see uh, crypto sell off with the stock market. I have a big downside move coming later this year in the stock market. And that's going to be the catalyst to really take us to that 12, 13,000 marker on Bitcoin. And I actually think that Ethereum is very likely going to head down to this next target around $645. So I have it priced in. That should be the, the level that Ethereum hits when Bitcoin hits 12 to 13,000. How did you come up with that yellow line? Uh, key major support. It was the beginning of the big bull market. This would be 100% retrace to the start of that bull market. Major support right here as well. It doesn't have to, but it is in my in my thought process, meaning that there is a possibility of that happening. There might be a lot of hype around the merge that could drive it higher. Um, but I'm not necessarily anticipating that, but you have to calculate that into your kind of your risk assessment when you're looking at Ethereum here. So this is this is again a fear of the Fed not loose or not not backing off. We got the minutes last week from the Federal Reserve meeting that kind of was the end of the move. Right into those minutes are when we touched the 200 moving average, which was the technical resistance level. And then as soon as we heard from the Fed, it didn't seem as they were as they were as dovish as the market wanted. And we've seen the dollar just soar here. Take a look at the at DXY chart. Let me punch that in here. And we've seen the dollar basically up to a double top up here. But look at the run on the dollar basically since that move from the Fed or since the, the minutes came out. And that is putting major pressure. The, the stock market does not like a strong dollar. It wants a stable or slightly weaker dollar. And that, again, is problematic here for the market. So as long as the dollar is going higher, it's telling you that, again, investors are, are moving away from stocks. And that's why we're seeing the selling that we're seeing. If you sell in terms of yen or euros and then you convert it back, right? So you're taking in yen or euros. And between that period of the conversion back into dollars, the dollar strengthens. So you're actually getting less out of it. And we've okay. seen even stocks like IBM, companies like IBM, they took a $3 billion hit because of the currency issues here. So, so it's kind of wacky how that's working right now, but it, it is definitely a headwind. And I think it's important to understand what does a strong dollar mean? It means people are going into the US dollar for safety. And what they're doing here is they're saying, all right, the Fed is going to drive us into recession. And therefore, and they're not lightening up, even though we know the economy is weakening per economic data. And so they're hiding in the dollar. They're selling risk assets that might be affected by a weaker economy. And that, again, is a, is a kind of an issue that the markets are very freaked out about right now. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time. They get your life. You are not even in a rat race. You're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? How should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave. You forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have.
see at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Marcus Dan.